Gorkhast is brought to you by American Horrors. The greatest uncut horror channel in the world. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, all horror. As well as the station of decapitation without your head. America's longest running horror channel, www.withoutyourhead.com The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. What's up, Gorecasters, and welcome to the Gorecast here on Sunday with me, Johnny Deadly, who's on the opposite side of the room for no apparent fucking reason. I just thought, you gotta change it up. You gotta change it up occasionally. Yeah. And my phone's plugged in over here, so that's the way that works. Um, this is my, <laughs> this is me, amigo, uh, the gays, and we're here to talk some horror with you guys oh, on this fantastic Sunday. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So, I thought that maybe we could get a few news bits, but to be honest, it's kind of been a bit of a slow week, but there was one thing that caught my attention. You see, Netflix recently brought out um, a new series, which, to be perfectly honest, had a lot of people going, yay, and that was The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Can I say the line? What line? Satanists are now becoming social justice workers. Oh, that line. Well, I was getting to that, but... Yeah, um, the Satanists have decided to jump on the pointlessly correct tabard by suing, or attempting to suing, maybe, I don't know, Netflix series, The Sabrina. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Yeah. because apparently in the um, the lobby of the School for Unseen Arts, there's a big old statue of Baphomet that looks remarkably like the nine foot tall statue of Baphomet that the, what is it, uh, Satanic Temple, hmm, there we go, yeah, Satanic Temple has just unveiled. I don't in know fact, why the story um, brings such a fucking smile to my face, but it does. I'm like, <laughs> because to be perfectly honest, PC as far as I, I love it. As far as I'm concerned, it'd be like laughing at people suing for a church being in something where by a bunch of priests were molesting kids, or you know, something that's like ridiculous that has potential stuff and God, oh, it's all bollocksology, bollocksology everywhere. But anyway, um. Temple co-founder Lucien Graves claims that... Uh, hey, I like, can I say that he, he sounds like a satanic cult leader? Because he probably changed his name to be Lucien. Because I'm sure Tim didn't sound culty enough. You know. Fuck, you're fired up today, here. I am a bit, yeah. Yeah, what in the hell? Um, <laughs> hang on, bear with me. I feel that the use of our particular image that is recognised as our own central icon, displayed fictionally as central to some cannibalistic cult, has real-world damaging effects for us. That's true. That is true. But if the if the, the cult of Christ could survive the Inquisition, I'm sure that satanic Satanists who, you know, still believe in God and other fictional creatures can survive this fictional show. You're way more fired up on this side of the studio for some reason. What in the fuck is going on? It's madness. I just, no, pointless fucking correctness is madness. Here's, I know, I know. Here's a hint for you, I right? Know, I agree. Here's a hint. God or Satan doesn't matter. Imaginary friends! Morons, it's all fiction. Anyway, that was about it really in regards to news. There wasn't really anything else um, <coughs> that I could see anyway. You know, uh, Stan vs. Evil is back, which is news, but that's a little bit of a... That's something we'd want to review. It, 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 think, it's it, it's A, it's something we'd want to review, and B, it seems a little bit futile now after the fucking tirade you just said. I, wasn't, I just thought it was like, we're going to do a funny story about saying this going PC. I wasn't expecting that at all. Neither was I. Bloody I, hell, man. Neither was I until I started talk, thinking about the absolute ridiculousness of it. Yeah, I know. Bear in <laughs> mind, right? No problem with Satanists. In fact, to be perfectly honest, when it comes to a bunch of crazy bastards that want to follow somebody else's imaginary friend, at least they're willing to let people do their own thing. You know, as opposed to burning you at the stake if you don't believe in cannibalism, um, you know, zombies and the rape of underage girls like the Spanish Inquisition. Jesus. Did. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Do you know what? Hey, hey. Hey, hey, do you know what we'll do? I was just thinking, do you know, after all the, the rape talk there, I, I was like, maybe we'll just say hello to everyone that's in before we get kicked clean off the fucking air. For what? Truth. You know how much the truth hurts. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Brian Murphy. I thought that was Brian Murphy. (laughs) It does tie in somewhat with um, one of the films we're going to be reviewing because at the end of the day, people love their fake news. Glad I Irished up my fucking coffee if this is the start of the show. (laughs) Oh, yeah. We're five minutes in. That's that's not even five minutes in, goddammit. Anywho, say hello to Burn. Burn's in the studio. Hi, Burn. Uh, Katie McNeil. Hey, Katie. How's it going? Guten Abend. Uh, Darren McKenna. Hello, Charlene. Hello, Charlene. Hello. Charlene, hello. Hello. Uh, Burn, Katie. Billy Maloney, how are you? Max, Hello. how are you? Darren English, how are you? Hi, everybody. That's everybody else. And then there's other people who haven't commented. Feel free to comment. And we'll also say hello to you because we're Boy. Irish and it's kind of ingrained into us. Yeah. It's called being polite. It is. Japanese bow and Irish people are... How are you? How are you? Are you well? How are you? How are you? How's it going? Are you all right? Punching. Yeah. Because it does look like if you're a foreigner who comes to Ireland that all Irish people know each other, but it's just this... Ingrained politeness of just if someone looks at you, you nod and you're like, oh, wait, Do you remember oh, jump, the bit you oh. told me the other day about somebody asking if you could get in contact with someone and you saying, you know, funnily enough, I actually kind of can. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but like, I know, I know a lot of people though. Do you know what I mean? Above like the normal. Anyway, regard like that's fucking got nothing to do with this. Lord, you're sidetracking. Good God Almighty. Maybe it's just this side of the room is the designated side tracker. Yeah, is it? Is that what it? Oh, does this mean I'm the smart one now? Let's see. Okay, well, first up, I was thinking President Evil because I like the social commentary that it talks about. It talks about it's like or, well, the social commentary that he goes. This man, is what's happening. Brooks, this Brooks is what's happening. Fucking look in with this fellow, man. This is what's happening. <laughs> In your face. And just in case you didn't know, we're going to mesh it around a little bit. All right. I'm going to merge what you said and I'm going to merge what I said as an opening line about this movie, I think, because I think it's the best overall synopsis you can get, really. I'm curious because I have no idea what I said a while ago. Uh, it's, imagine if you had Halloween, but directed by Mel Brooks, but Michael Myers is socio-politically driven instead of just, I like murdering people. It depends what, <laughs> now we can actually be like, it depends what era of family and you come from, because if it's in the original Halloween's, as I just like murdering people who are my family. And, oh, no, actually, no, he just likes murdering people. It's just in the new one, he just likes murdering people <laughs> in general. <laughs> she was the one that got away, but in general, I just like killing people. You don't need to be a strode. Anyway, um, in this, he wears a Donald Trump mask. He wears a Donald Trump mask and he doesn't like Mexicans and he doesn't like Islamic people and he doesn't like uh, he doesn't like anyone really unless they're Irish or white or have or sorry, Irish or white sorry not Irish I don't actually I, Irish didn't come up in it but I feel it probably have a problem Don't forget no Irish no dogs no women That's a different country No that was America No that was England That was England That was America as well When was it? No oh. blacks no Irish no dogs when was it? Oh boy the same country? No, afterwards. After the tea party? Yeah. Before the tea party, maybe. Do you not remember that whole... I obviously don't, because it was back in the fucking 1800s. Civil war, whereby slavery was a big issue, because, you know... I've heard it's the it. same mentality. I've heard about it. <laughs> That's a joke. I'm aware of it. I'm just... I can't even remember how you got me onto that now. Well, it is a very politically charged movie. It is... And yeah, it's a very charged movie. It's a very politically and racially charged and gender biasedly. Oh yeah, this film just basically it's it is any, any satire of any the highest of, order. It, the easiest way of describing it is any of the crazy shit you've heard a certain president or a certain pair of presidents, I suppose, well, talking about in the last twelve months. Yeah, one in particular. And it, uh, one in yeah, one in particular. This, this film basically takes the entire notion of Donald Trump and reminds humanity of what a character he actually is. He's a real character. He's a real character. Yeah, he's a, a fucking cartoon character. character. He's a cartoon character. And in this, he's portrayed brilliantly, kind of, ish. It's a, it, uh, yeah. yeah. Whoever's doing his voice has got him. He's like Alec Baldwin level of Donald Trump. Firstly, to get into it, President Evil is a fantastic homage slash political satire slash parody mm. of the original Halloween movie. Yeah. The soundtrack is spot on to the point that he was like, how are they not getting sued? And I was like, because it's not the same tune. It is the same tune. It's not. It's just 
a little bit. Yeah, I know. I, I know it's a little bit different, but it's so a little bit different that I'm like, how in the name of flying? Anyway, we're not going to talk about that on air. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it also points to there's also direct scene comparisons, much like other stuff. As in, like, hmm. there, there are, like, shot-for-shot shot scenes. There's some shot-for-shot shot remakes. Um, all of the murder scenes and the pacing of the way that they play out are done absolutely by the Carpenter handbook. Yeah. Um, and then... I like the way that they've managed to tackle literally every ethnically related political problem. Like, literally... To clarify, the, f- everyone. the film starts off on... Um, uh, election Day, 1980s. 1980s, yeah. And, and little, little there's a, a, a Randy mom and a... Is he the limo driver or the friend or... She was calling him your highness. I'm wondering if perhaps he's a foreign dignitary and that's kind of part of the reason... Or maybe not, I don't know. It could have just been a pet name. He sure as hell didn't sound foreign. Because <laughs> do you remember when they're like, Where, where's, she was all where's your son? son? He's fucking out there. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So he <coughs> mom in the act of getting boned by this guy because mom is just a cheating gold digger. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, you know, it's warmed her way into that fortune. And apparently little David is running around in a Ronald Reagan mask. A Ronald Reagan mask, yeah. Because he's got an addiction to the Democrats. Republicans. Republicans, sorry. Fuck. You're right, you're right. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a bit in the film, by the way. Republicans, ah! They scare me. Scary words. Poor little Pepe. Poor little Pepe. Anyway, young David will go on the same killing spree that Mike went on and basically whack the mother in hilarious fashion. Just yeah. The line out of him, were those party poppers? No. <laughs> yeah, I just heard something pop and explode like party poppers and then I saw her... Well, I... <laughs> uh, Trust me. I don't want to give it away. You'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah it's fuck. hilarious. You'll figure it out. David ends up getting arrested and institutionalized and then 30 odd years later, 38 years later, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly 40 years to the day, strangely enough. <laughs> he breaks out. Oh, Lord, why did you let it break yeah. out? Save me, save me. And, yeah. the, and the wages I'm getting paid, hey, you're yeah. on your own. There's, there's fantastically hilarious little nods to all of the Donald Trump political ties around the world. There is so much in this that's basically in your face. Yeah. It's not even political satire. It well, the Republicans are powered by Satan, which we, 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 what we knew. <laughs> it's nice <laughs> to see it in a movie. <laughs> not, not so much the Republicans as this particular person. This is, particular... Well, er, the, there's, the, there's that ritualistic act that does take place, but it's not the... I think they just tied that in for the sake of Halloween 3. But, but, a season of the Witch? Uh... Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> it was very strange where that guy came from as well. Not strange, but as in in relation to the story. Now. I he was the fucking he was the Lumen. He, he was the Doctor. Lo- he was in relation to the Halloween side of the story. He's the Doctor Loomis character. In relation to the political satire side of the story, he's Putin. <laughs> yeah, he is, and we get a scene that perfectly fucking glorifies that. Down to the shirtless horse riding and everything. It is hilarious. In place of um, in, pa- in place of Laurie Strode, we have uh, Lana. Did you miss um, the shirtless horse riding? No. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I was like, I was pretty sure she was there. No. She was. She's just in stitches because we're uh-huh. that damn funny, apparently. Um, in place of Laurie, we have Lana. Yeah. Who is this nice, upstanding Muslim girl who ain't afraid yep. to basically tell the truth, which is that the world is a fucked up place. Yep. Full of really fucked up morons that just decide to let fear. And hatred, and as far as I'm concerned, their own self hatred to get the better of them. Because at the end of the day, racism's for amateurs. If you want to really hate, you hate everyone equally! Sorry. Um, but like I said, some fantastic writing, some fantastic dialogue. I think young Pepe, the, the kid that, that instead. I have to work with that six days a week. <laughs> or this, which is it's actually seven days a week. Yeah. Except this is live, so I don't consider it as much work, strangely enough. Hmm. Just let you know. Uh, Lana, La, uh, yeah, Lana kind of looks after young Pepe, um, whose parents were just lifted by the INS for the sake of, yeah. for, because, you know, they were... Because they're... Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Sister Blanca is left to look after him. Um, mm-hmm. Their brother, Gabriel, who is serving as um, a lance corporal in the armed forces. Yeah, and also as the cover boy for Transgender Monthly. How do you find that out later on? You find it out pretty quick. Uh, no, you find that out later on. 
You find out he's transgender. Oh, you find out he's transgender pretty, pretty quickly. Around. You find out about the magazine yeah. later on. But the, the whole transgender issue comes up pretty quickly. Yeah, and there's also um, Medjian. Yeah, yes. Medjian. Um, the one who's always smiling. Yeah, she was born smiling. She's happy about everything. Life sucks, so she might as well find something to laugh at, even if it is their new bigotist president. Considering what's going on, very good, uh, hmm. very good thing. Like I said, the entire film plays out basically almost scene for scene at times, like Halloween. Except rather than Mike Myers going around murdering people because of whatever the hell is on his head, you have David going around murdering... He's acting a cleansing. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 look, we'll, we'll call, there's, look, there's no beating around the bush. There was a fantastic scene early we'll on. We'll put it this way. No white people got stabbed in the making of this movie. But a few whack, a few wank stained white boys did get beaten up by the girls. They got their asses handed them. And it, they were phenomenally racist. They were phenomenally sexist against women. They were, they were just they were actually typical, phenomenally typical brain dead. Typical fucking salmon shirt wearing fucking wanker. That kind of it's fucking salmon. It's fucking pink. Just call it a fucking pink, mate. Yeah. It's, there, it's manlier to call it a fucking pink. There is a fantastic scene. Um, once again, Mary anyway, they got their asses railroaded, and it was very good. And I quite I, I like, as anyone knows, <laughs> I, I love watching dickheads get yeah. comeuppance. Anyway, um, sorry, let's just be done with that. Just like, come There's a fantastic scene that mirrors almost identical to the scene from Halloween, and that's Laurie in class and her stuff going on. She looks out and, yeah. you know, she sees Mike. In this, however, you have a teacher explaining um, the rise of Hitler. Yeah. But the way he does it, he's explaining the rise of Trump. You know, yeah. The speeches with flashy words like, you know, loser, winner, kofifi. And other such rhetoric that people just want to believe. The big he's no, they were the they were the trigger the, words. They were the trigger words he uses to yeah. set he's people explaining, off. He's explaining the big lie, which, to be perfectly honest, is actually one hundred percent accurate. The, if you, you see, tell people stuff loudly enough, boisterously enough, and convincingly enough, they think it's the truth, or at least they want to believe it. Because if you it fits compare us to him again, I'll push you clean off your chair. <laughs> Who's the one that keeps telling me to start a cult? Not me either. I'm just telling you that you could. I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying do it. I actually shudder at the thought, to mm. be honest. Actually, I'll probably shut it down pretty... I'll, that, that'll be... I'm looking like, no, this... No. <laughs> anyway. No. You crazy fucks! I don't know what the fuck you get the fuck out! Out! Out, you loopy sons of bitches! Jesus! Anyway, as I said, <laughs> this scene is a prime example of how no. intelligent... How intelligent this film is. Because it draws direct historical comparisons. It actually allows the character that's doing it... Pause. All right, Pickle. Continue. Sorry. It actually allows the character that's doing it to be kind of um, poked at as well. Yeah. Because it turns out his great-great-grandfather or his grandfather, when he came to America, hosted on the radio, Mein Fuhrer and Friends, which managed to turn a large swathe of the American population into Nazis. It's cool because the teacher standing there going, yes... Yes, that is part of my deplorable heritage. Thank you for bringing it up. I try to forget about it all the time. Back to the lessons. Then we go talking about the solar eclipse and you know, handing out special glasses. Remember, don't look up into the eclipse. You'll ruin your eyesight. It's all right. No one here would do that because if you did, you're a complete and utter moron. Lana looks out and there's David looking up at the eclipse. <laughs> 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 Stuff like this is scattered throughout yeah. this entire movie. It's it, it's a very smart political satire movie. Yeah. But there, there even, are the, you there, can't even call it political because it's real life satire. There, like, you know, yeah, but it. Uh, I'm not even going to get into that. But anyway, um, <coughs> scary, scary movie esque, occasional slapstick comedy in it, but most of the time it's actually very well. It's more. There are, Sorry. There's there's certain slapsticky moments. Yeah, there which is, are great. There's times when it's kind of like, oh my god, the characters can't be this stupid, and then you're kind of like, except they're supposed to be this stupid because that's how smart this film is. To we'll show agree it. to disagree on one bit. What bit? The the one that I was having a mental breakdown about going, how in the flying fuck does this happen? <laughs> how are you not getting away? All you oh, have to that. do is lean on the wall and roll. That. I didn't disagree with that. Yeah, but you were like. I think that storyline does a like her leg is tick. oh the, yeah nothing happened to her leg no, no. <sighs> storyline as she fell down the stairs bitches I'm be tripping back gag <laughs> yeah I I get that but she wasn't tripping that was yeah, down the stairs she, that was bitches be sitting 
<coughs> been running for a long she time. She fell or? down the stick. I get that, but like she didn't even have to trip. She just ne- the fucking thing was like waist high. All she had to do was like pull and roll her legs up. Maybe not that hard because you'd break your face off the concrete, but like just, just and roll your legs up. And Donald Trump, Myers, Michael, David had the same level of urgency in chasing people as every other serial killer in a slasher movie. So she had time. She could have even given her. A, there was a good ten attempts there, I'd say, before he even got within swinging distance with the knife. Is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Because when the guy came with the thing that made the thing happen, that brings you near the end of the movie. <laughs> she fucking moved then. <laughs> Just to lighten his mood. It did, however, get him very interested in the in a potential new TV show. Mexican Ninja Warrior. Oh, I, I wasn't sure where they going to go with it. Oh, they, he, he says this thing about... Uh, the, so in the opening credits, there's these... Uh, monologues, like the Nuremberg speech. Monologues of, of stuff that... I, here's the thing. Right, and believe. Could, let me say my goddamn line. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm aware it's probably the guy doing a voiceover or whatever, and what he says are fucking crazy, but they're so fucking crazy that I'm not sure is he just quoting Trump. <laughs> there is a few quotes. Yeah, he said that he they um he said he was talking about building the wall. <laughs> He's talking about building the wall and said, we need a new TV show and we're going to call it Mexican Ninja Warrior because I don't know if you've seen those guys scale the wall, but it's amazing. <laughs> but then they do. <laughs> but then they scale the wall and it's amazing. <laughs> it's actually fun. I think 1980s Batman. Yeah. <laughs> 1960s. Whatever. I don't care. Whatever decade. You love climbing the wall Batman. Adam West. Or Adam West. Whatever. Hashtag this film shamelessly sticks everything in your face and goes look at this A this is actually the real world B you need to laugh at it it actually it's it's like an entertaining comedy driven slideshow of racism and hate using the Halloween film as the skeleton structure by which the meat and bones of the film is is, is, like if you think about the opening it starts with uh, it wants to get past the was initially that opening credit scene. The yeah, once, once you get past the pre-credit scene, yeah. you have Pepe and Lana talking. So you already have the situation of INS and that getting removed. Then it goes, moving on. And then it's like Fiesta Box and they're giving us shit food and shit this and all that. Moving on. And then it's like uh, Islamic people. Oh, we can't let you near our house. She's Islamic. <laughs> moving on. You know, and it's literally a very well-constructed slideshow of haste. And I... I don't know America inside out, but I know I watch the fucking news and I can't say it's like that that hardcore everywhere, but it is that hardcore in some, some places. places. And it is it's like it's like a it's it's like they managed to find the funny in the haste and spin it to you in such a way. But like Like I said, when you're faced with something that preposterous, the only thing you can do is laugh in its face for the stupidity that it is. Yeah. And by that I mean, like I said. Yeah. Or, or in the case of the near ending scene, shoot in the fucking face twice for some fucking reason because people never shoot anything you in the always face. Always fragging double tap. If the zombie movies taught us nothing, I would have shot him. I would have shot him. I would have shot him in the face. Decapitate that I would have shot him in the face and I would have fucked him over the balcony just to be safe. If he's getting up, he's going to have a fucking stroll back to me, buddy. <laughs> Plenty of time for me to load up and aim again. Three, three walls and a banister, buddy. You're we'll be here to trailer and we'll come back with final <laughs> thoughts. Hmm. Uh, as in, you know, if there was any, is there any final thoughts? thoughts? Is there any final thoughts? We'll, think we'll, we'll do a synopsis. We'll It'll be fine. Whatever, whatever. Hunky dory. We're trying to fill time because we're low on trailers compared to usual. <laughs> Oops. Well, we're doing less movies than usual just because yeah. I can. didn't have time. He was busy. And we don't have a promo for this week's show because this week's show is a short film. So you just need to go to American Horrors and watch the short film. Oh. I, can also, I, I might put, I might put on your funeral again. Like people, it's okay, Robo. Gives too. Don't worry. What? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Anyway, trailer. We live in a dangerous world, Pepe. Muslim, Mexican, Haitian, gay, black, transgender. They don't want us to be part of their elitist society. If it was up to them, they'd throw us all away. The world is not ready for this creature's level of hatred. Hypocrisy, insolence, lies, prejudice, and vanity. You have to stop him.
I'm back, douche. So is Robo Giz. Fuck you mean Robo? What? It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Anyway, uh, so that's the trailer for President Evil, which I thought was longer, actually, strangely enough. That happens all the time. Um, yeah, which I appreciate. It's weird, because it's like, you know, I give out when the trailers are too long, but then they really ruin our fucking smoke breaks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like thank you Hollywood for understanding us podcasters need a smoke break cat's hysteria oh we'll say hello uh, Cats and dogs there's there. a cool name Avante Douglas I'm loving it hello uh, say hello uh, William hello how are you uh, Mike Rydell how are you Sean Flynn how are you hey Sean Flynn who's Scott oh Scott question mark no idea I don't know um, yeah, all in all, really enjoyable movie. I did find the, what's the, what's the best way of putting this? I did find the political stuff side of it a little too in your face sometimes. It's, yeah, the basically this film doesn't know what the word subtlety is because I yeah. think it literally forgot what you know, the yeah. has a place in the well, look, if you if you look at the overall tone of the movie, yeah, uh, subtlety, subtlety would actually stick out like a sore thumb in this. Yeah. To be honest, it's just I, I just did feel I, I'm hesitant to say propaganda movie because it's not propaganda movie because it's not talking bullshit. They're just bringing truth to the table. But look, at the end of the day, when it comes to and there's a reason that we were using Max Brooks as the obvious Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks, sorry, yeah. Max Brooks wrote World War Z. My apologies. Um, we're, there's a reason we're, we're using him as a comparison. And it is because many of his satire films were... They're on the nose. And very in your face. Like, um, very what's, the, what's the most racist movie in the planet? Uh, the the cow, cowboy the western film. one. It's gone out of my head. Mine too. Wagons East? No. Burn, burn, Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles, that's it. You know, so like he, he literally took all of that racism that was in... Cinema. Well, not in cinema. He took all of that racism and took a genre where that racism in cinema would have been very prevalent and just... Yeah. Put it on his head. You got a goddamn black sheriff? <laughs> and, this, you know? and this film is very much like that, whereby yeah. it takes all of these glaring racist and and phobias, which is stupid because fear... And, all of this, all these pet hates that people have... All this stuff that they feel they can single, you know, they can zero in on and say that's wrong about this person, that's yeah. wrong about this person, that's wrong about these people, and I, I, I'm not into that, so I hate that and fear that. It or takes I don't agree with this thing about your culture, and that speaks for every, every single one of you. None of you are individuals. That's the universal thought that all of you think. It takes all of this stuff and it gems it together and shoves all that hate. Yeah. But then it also, and I thought it was brilliant, Lana's father when he's walking up the stairs. <coughs> Um, he has to go into like this abandoned building and he's checking to see if... Oh, the Jesus in. speech? Well, it's not a Jesus speech. That's just it, though. Yeah. He's walking up the stairs and he's going... Um, I'll help you. I'll feed you. Yeah, you've, if, you've nothing to fear. If you're in trouble, I'll help you. If you're hungry, I'll feed you. That's the way of my people. Yeah. We care for our community. And just then he gets hit. And I thought that was, that was really good because there's a couple of bits like that whereby it shows that side and then it shows the... How can I put this idiotic, unequivocal, and just ignorant hate, purely based on the fact that you're different, I'm going to hate you. And it takes all that stupidity, and it shows how stupid it is, and it just takes the piss out of it, brilliantly. And yeah, it is rather intense, and it is full on. But I think that, to be perfectly honest, given the way a lot of audiences are, and given the attention span, and given some of the films that have been blockbuster hits because they rely on pure humor or idiot jokes or stupid jump scares or other you know stuff designed for people that have zero attention span given all that this is the ideal film because it continuously shoves stuff in their face just in case their memory goes for five but seconds the, but the scares the scares in, and this is something i have to give credit to in the movie the scares in this movie aren't slapstick stupid scare like they're they're genuine yeah like blueprint from Halloween, Halloween style, like very John Carpenter esque. Some of the shots are spot on. Yeah, they there, get it there's so. Some, there's some fantastic nice. long, um, some fantastic long tracking shots following people in the walking, which like Carpenter loves doing, especially like with the big long streets. Like Lana big, walking through, walk, yeah. walking through the building is just that 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 second of him being there is just like whoa. Yeah, 
Do you know? So they really, really it's, knew it's, what it's, they were doing. It's, it's an actual. It, it's a proper, proper horror movie that they very intelligently managed to add political satire yeah. and humor in and around it. Yeah, which I have to say, because like if you like your good hardcore horror movie scares, you'll get them. Yeah, there's some great murders. <laughs> and there's some fantastic gags. There's some great murders. There's some fantastic. There's some fucking great gags. Now, as is the percentage of America, fifty percent of you are going to fucking hate this fucking movie. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> mm. But it's bloody good. Yeah. It's good. It says a lot. It says a lot by saying a little. No, it says a lot by saying a lot. It says a lot by saying a lot. And it's not a lot. A, yeah, a lot. But, Continuous. Yeah, but also entertaining. Yeah. So it's really good. Um, I don't know when the release date for that is. Do you have? Uh, I'll put it in the chat feed there. I'll check it during the next trailer, worst case scenario. I don't have it here. For anybody that happens to be watching us on Twitch, because we're actually dual streaming today, I'm trying something out because I'm crazy. You're probably better off messaging us on Facebook because I can't actually read Twitch at the moment. I just realized. So, if you, if you want to, uh, if you if you take a look at, at above the logo right there, you see that's a Facebook link. If you just follow that, you can come over and say howdy. We all cool. Or I'll or I'll reply to all of your messages when we get back off air. When I go on Twitch and start shooting people in PUBG, because that's what I do. Okay then. Or well, PUBG. Or I found one that you'd like actually now. I can't remember the name of it. I just don't know what your tablet on it. But it's like PUBG, but instead it's all wizards and warlocks and mages. Just I play PUBG as well. Right? Oh yeah, no. I, it just seems like it's a lower graphics engine, ah, so it yes. shouldn't. Right. Anyway, on to the next one. Yeah, on to the next movie. Whoa, this is great. Just fucking great. Like I really enjoyed President Evil, but this is like this is like I could I'd have paid gone into the cinema and seen this. Not a bother. The, her the heretics is just silky. Oh, it's quality. Silky, silky, silky smooth. Um <coughs> sorry, I needed the cough. Oh, okay. I thought we were doing a thing. Okay. No, I actually legitimately needed the cough. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah. I don't know. The film starts off with um, the abduction of Gloria. Well, actually, not even the abduction. She has been abducted. Yeah. She is chained down to a table. It starts and off There's all with, kinds of yeah. mad-ass cult shit going on around. you got a load of lads standing around. They're wearing bark on their face in Some, varying degrees of bark. No, there's one bark mask, but there's other masks. Like, there's flesh masks as well. I just noticed a lot of bark masks. There's hunters. The and yeah, yeah, but it's all made out of bark. She's in the middle of a cult, and they're doing culty type stuff. Mm. And then they're... What they're chatting and all the rest of it. And now here's the thing, right? Straight away, here's the thing. You know, you know something insanely bad is going to happen when a cult ritual ends with all the cult members slitting their own their own throats. You said that, cult members there. <laughs> that right there is some bad juju. Did you hear that? That wasn't just me. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You're you're saying weird shit, right? I say weird shit all the time. Yeah, I know, but it's in as in you're like, I said that. No, 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 no. I think you'll find <laughs> Like your Donald Trump impression. Where you thought that it sounded, sounded like, like Sean Connery was a like, speech impediment. Yeah, it did. It did. It did sound like I I can barely like I, I can like half ish, maybe, possibly on the odd word sound like <coughs> Trump. It's mostly you doing a thing. You know? Like it sounded like anyway, regardless Back to the Harry on, I'm having an entertaining night with you, that's all it's <laughs> Like I said, you know things are like serious when the old black magic ritual ends up with most of the people performing it whacking themselves. So it's like, huh, okay. That's a bad thing. Yeah, not in a Kool-Aid kind of way. As in a very quick, three, two, one, blah. <laughs> Blood spurt everywhere, it's great. Blood spurt everywhere, everyone drops down and then the young lady wakes up the following morning on In tight. Because it turns out that it was a nightmare, but... This is actually five years later, as you find out. She actually, yes. you know... Um, it was a thing. It wasn't a nightmare. It was, it was a flashback. Yeah. So long, young Gloria has been dealing with the fact that she was abducted five years ago, and she is going to group counselling with her girlfriend, Joan. Um, Joan. Hashtag bitch. Joan is a little bit more volatile than Gloria. Um, when one of the other women recounts her tale, Joan's... Um, solution is not to just accept it and forgive the husband that beats her but to go home and kill that motherfucker because apparently revenge is the best thing and it'll make sure that it doesn't happen again hashtag bitch needless to say Joan is asked <laughs> to leave the group 
for the aforementioned hashtag. Yeah. Um, You're being a bit of a bitch, Joan, to be honest. <laughs> we quickly find out that um, Gloria and Joan have been together for a year, which is more or less the time that Joan has been part of the group. Yeah. Um, she strangely came in and her sudden Gloria magically attracted to each other and then they were all doing the things that ladies do together. And it's not plotting hair. I was actually going to say it was plotting hair <laughs> and do those types of things. Maybe they did all of it. I'm sure they did. Well, we didn't anyway. see them do any of it. So I'm running on the assumption that it was a nice civil relationship. Anyway. I don't know why. I just, I just like wrecking your head. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm waiting for the next comment to come in. No? No? Okay. Uh, what comment? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just waiting for something. <laughs> yeah. Gloria and Joan have a night together, bid farewell. The following day is going to be the anniversary. Mm -hmm. She gives a really Gloria, little necklace. Yeah. Gloria has told her mother she'd be walking home, everything would be fine, blah, blah, blah. And everything's not fine. Because Gloria walks past this suspiciously parked camper van right outside yeah. her home. What can only be described as a rape van. It, like, it looks like a rape van. It looks like the type of van that people pick people up in to go rape them. And then it looks like a rape van. And it had the door open in an enticing, come, come get raped kind of manner. So she obviously popped her head in because that's what these things do. Yeah, wasn't helped by the fact that a the guy then came up from behind her and asked her if this brag smelled like chloroform. Well, he didn't ask. But, Quick know, note. It's, it's it did. <laughs> Yes, it did. It did smell like chloroform. So, needless to say, Gloria wakes up chained down in the back of a camper van, and so yeah. begins one of the most interesting treks through a storyline ever. Because this makes you think it's going one way, and then you realize it's actually going another way. And then the thing that you thought that was happening at the start that you were like, oh no, that's all just fucking food and bollocks, turns out is it a fucking totally it's, applicable thing. Yeah. And it's. So fucking good, it's not even funny. Um, we end up with a fantastic story which outlines Thomas, who is a former member, a scared up former member of the who cult, has, yeah, who, who realized has. that everything was fucking crazy when he realized they were going to destroy something as beautiful as Gloria. And essentially, he loves the woman because she essentially saved his life because she was the lady that opened up his eyes and went, This is a pile of cockamamie bullshit. Put a pin in that note of what I said there because that's going to be very applicable as part of a conversation later on in relation to the bullshit part specifically. Pin that because that will be coming back up. So anyway, what you get is a really interesting story that has Gloria as a captive. It's almost like Stockholm Syndrome after a while to a degree because... Or you don't know or is it just the thing making him fucking trip bollocks? <laughs> you, you, never, you never know what bit's actually happening and what bit's in the fucking head. I meant insofar as Gloria, like, slowly but surely not thinking she's in danger from him, but... That he yeah, well, you, in the man's defence, you do kind of figure, yeah. bar occasionally him waving a gun in her face to blow, blow her brains out. There are so many twists in this film that to really go into any of them would actually kind of ruin things. Suffice to say, the acting is fucking brilliant. The storytelling is good. Yeah. A little bit slow paced at first, but then it's a good building slow pace. And in relation to the twists as well, what I really enjoyed about the twists are they aren't these like out of nowhere curved twists. They're these real subtle yeah, little like, twists. I wonder if. Oh. Yeah. You know, that kind of. We were, now, I, there are one or two little bits where you see someone do something and you're like, holy fucking shit, they're mental. What's going on? I, that, I could not have sounded more Irish. That's the most Irish I've sounded on the show. Oh, Unintentionally. Oh, holy shit, they're now they're fucking mental by it. What fucking, fucking crazy bitches. But um, yeah, so anyway, as I said, fantastic storytelling. Really, really good special effects. Really, really good special. If you like your body horror movies, this is... Good. You okay? Yeah. You have conniption fit? No. I thought your tablet was good. <laughs> Fine. Everything tablet good. subliminally sending him trigger words. <laughs> Cancel. <Okay>. Oh! <laughs> but, um... Fucker. Yeah, no, uh... The, the body horror side of this is fucking great because Gloria... Gloria goes through a journey and... And, oh my, what a journey it is. As is the, the mindfuck side of things, yeah. because there is... And so does Thomas, because Thomas goes through a journey of realisation, realising, going, holy fuck, my family aren't mental. Well, it's not well no, sorry, it's... my family are mental, but what I thought they were mental for, they're actually fucking not. They're just mental on a completely different level. Well, there's that, and there's the questioning of reality at times due to how stuff is playing out. Yeah, because there's a, a, 
an evil deity that's playing people like a bloody lute. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, overall, The Heretics does a fantastic job of really drawing you in. Like yeah. I said, it's a slow start and you're kind of looking at the characters going, okay, well, I think I know what direction this story is happening, is going in. Okay, there's the obligatory thing that I was expecting to happen and it's going to go this way, wait a second, what? Hang on, what? What's going on here? That doesn't seem right. And Sarah Hayes, hello. New someone. Oh, hello. That doesn't seem right. And that person just did something really weird. And I wonder if this could be a, oh, hang on. Ha, whoa. And then before you know it, things are going completely out of control. It's like, whoa. Well, that's a thing now. That is certainly a yeah. thing. And that's an interesting thing. And that explains a whole lot of stuff. And I will, I, I have to say, because I'm, anyone who knows, I'm, I'm not a sappy, me, me no likey sappy in general and there was a lot of soppy at the start and I I was not liking it and you were like oh trust me the soppy is there for a reason and it is because the soppy fuck me man when it stops being soppy whew, you were just looking at it going oh, oh you horrible fucks oh I that thought you just... were motherfucker but you're actually sounding you're a thundering cunt what is going on in this film whatsoever there's so many it doesn't whoever you see show up don't Fucking expect them to be what they are when they come in up at the end because it's just no one is anything that they seem. God is fucking everything's mental. It's absolutely great. The cult guys are done brilliant. Yeah, I like the bark masks. I like the antlers and stuff like that. Cinematography was smooth. Cinematography. What's the name of the demon? Abaddon. Abaddon is bad ass looking. As he should be. As he should be. <laughs> and he Destroyer. is. Destroyer. He is bad ass looking. The makeup's done fantastic. The Face is done fantastic. The actor is great for a guy who doesn't particularly have lines. And what's more important is the way that the horror aspect is used. Like, yep. once again, it is an important thing. We're always going on about jump scares and, you know, the, the, the way certain things are used incorrectly. Yeah. Heretics uses them correctly. Do, like, the way we're going on about demons and cults and all of that, you'd be expecting a crazy off the wall murder fest but this is actually a very 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 well thought out psychological horror it fucks your brain it god knows it fucks the brains of the people on screen I I nearly had three aneurysms during the film because we're like just fucking tell me am I right or am I wrong because we didn't watch it at the same time I I had wa I seen it earlier and I'm a bastard and refuse to tell people stuff yes and I'm very excitable about watching movies and it's a terrible <laughs> combination of things when we watch movies together which is what happened there today one scuffle later, and I found out, yes, I'm on the right track. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's crazy. When you accidentally movie. called the ending, I thought that was brilliant. There's no accidentally. I read movies like books. No, I mean the, the specific physical ending. I saw that. I that I, did, yeah, I, I know. I can't I know. get in. I'll, I'll explain. It was, we, it, we, we won't. It's, let's just say it was hilarious <laughs> for me. We shall trailer? hit the trailer, and then we'll do our good thoughts, bad thoughts, and yeah. then we'll find a bit of news to talk about, because we're quite... Short. <laughs> uh, okay, hit it in now. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes the crow can bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. I thought that Eric was the last. I never imagined there would be another. It's another time. It's another world. And another has been chosen. They took you five years ago and they put something inside of you. Now, they're coming back for you. Tonight, to finish what they started. The night they took you. If you could go back, would you take another street? No nightmares. No support group. No me. They're coming for you. Tonight. She wouldn't run away. Someone took her. We'll look around. We'll canvas the area. Maybe somebody saw something. Maybe we'll get lucky. The last time anyone saw her was 2 a.m. this morning. Hand these out. We need to find her. What did they do to me? Something's happening to me! I need to protect 
you until the sun rises. Why are you trying to stop me? What did you say? You promised me the sunrise! Where are you going? Gloria is still out there to watch giving up! I'm Rebecca. Hmm. Okay, so there it is. <coughs> oh, you literally didn't have any problem with the movie. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was trying to think of something. Sorry, but you need to understand. The trailer went down and was like, okay, we'll come back and we'll talk about the good points and bad points about the film. Okay. I literally didn't have any bad points. But really? Okay. Like, I literally don't have any... I was trying to rack my head. Like, like, like with, with President Evil, the only really bad point I thought was just... It, some of it was just too in the face. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it can be when when all of it's in your face, it's it's kind of like it's really there. This was it was in your face when it needed to be. It was bloody subtle when it needed to be. It plays you like a song, Harp. like like he played me like that harpsichord from hell. It totally did. Uh, it totally did. Um, what's the actress' name? Plays Joan. Uh, Georgia Kids. When her character flips, man, it's like she's playing. It's like she, it's like two, watching two different people. Uh, the mother was brilliant. Your one that plays Gloria is uh, Nina Kitty. She, that woman is amazing. From start, to, she she manages to play fragile, scared, and crazy so fucking well. Yeah. Um, like real believable performances. Your man that plays Thomas was absolutely great. Uh, right, Irish. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. Like, it, it was just great, great, great job by fucking literally everybody. Like, the movie looks slick as hell. There is some really good um, scenes in regards... We mentioned earlier the fact that at times um, some of the characters have to kind of get a handle on what's real and what isn't real because of the head fuckness of yeah. the movie. There is some great scenes involving that. There's a scene with, Roy, with uh, Thomas holding a gun... And when it swaps oh. back to react, it's just brilliant. Reminded me of something that happened in, uh, I think it was the Evil Dead TV series. There was something similar. You know the way demons are able to make you see shit the way you want. They want you to see it. Mm. So, um, yeah, no, th this was this was top notch. Like, I this is this is like the grandson and one or two other films we've had the last couple of months where I'm like, this this is this is indie. Is this? Yeah. <laughs> how how indie is this? <laughs> Even the, you know? even the cinematography, everything about it. I, I was actually watching it kind of going, is this independent as in independent distribution? Because this is really well made. It's like the the actual quality of the footage is great. It's shot in a red, so you're, you're going to have great stock footage off it anyway. But the shot transitions are brilliant. The fluidity moving through the shots are fantastic. The colour grade, do you, like... What the was very the first thing he said... First thing I said... Is the colour grade like this the whole way through? Because this is brilliant. I was like, this is... like it's My response, of course, was, I don't know, but the camera work is pretty. Yeah, it's... It's got it's got this nice kind of autumn rustiness. Yeah. Like, there's kind of a rust... Like a reddish rustiness to it, and it really suits... Rustic, which suits what happens later on in the film when... Because there's, there's, there's a lot of, of woodland scene yeah, and stuff the, like that. The vast like, majority of the film takes place in a cabin in the woods. Yeah. But... But it is. We all know uh, how that goes in a horror movie. Not fucking well. <laughs> not fucking well at all. Get my dog. Get my dog. Get my dog. Um, yeah, no, go go out and get, uh, check dates there for me. They're, I'm on the wrong thingy for that thingy. Okay, sorry. You keep talking there for a minute and I'll check dates, so my friend. Yeah. Sorry, I'm using for anyone First that's watching November on Twitch. 1st of November 2017. Haha. <laughs> good man. 1st of November 2017. So this is already. No, don't check it there. <laughs> I'll check it. It's okay. You keep talking there for a minute. Was there any other sort of interesting news? Stand Against Evil's back, which I know I said was deflated by the crazy rant you had earlier, so I feel it's applicable to bring it back up now. I watched episode one. Are you good? It's a hoot. <laughs> it's a hoot. I'd say we'll wait. Um, wait until it's a few episodes in. We'll wait until it's a few episodes in. I feel due to how PC Satanism is getting, I think you and I should probably do Sabrina, because I think you and I should, I was, on, I you and I should, should on PC it. that... Nice and fast. I'll be honest, I was thinking we... Because you and I are great at on PCing things. I just want to know if there's any mention of the Groovy Ghoulies. 
Yeah, they are. They're sure. Think of who the... Uh, the Goodies are in Riverdale. Groovy Goodies? Yeah, they're the alternative white gang. The, the go they're not called the Groovy Goodies. They're just the Goodies, but I'd imagine it's... They're pretty groovy. Well, they all wear, like, they have eye makeup. They look like an like 80s biker punk band, but there's loads of them, and it's them against Jughead's Serpent Biker Gang. Okay. Or whatever. It's Jughead, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah Jughead's Biker Gang. So the, uh, they're at war. So it's kind of like the Mayans and the Sons of Anarchy, but it's the Ghoulies and the Serpents. What's disturbing me more is the, the recent article. That it sounds tr intriguing, or that we're actually talking about Archie? Essentially, we're talking about Archie, but yeah, fuck me, that Riverdale's TV series is dark as fuck. And you see, this is what I was getting to. I saw an article questioning whether or not Archie's just got full horror. I think it has, because it, like, it's got a serial killer in it. Like, whereas Black Hood goes around murdering um, sinners. You know, I actually legitimately, I really, it's terrifying to think that Archie versus Predator was a real comic, and I thought that was just like... Well, he's a big boy, and so is Jughead. Those boys can fight. <laughs> Pretty... Oh man, Jughead, drug, Jughead be dropping bombs like jacks from Sons Anarchy in Riverdale, right hook like a cannon. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Because like Jug is notorious. And the guy that gets um, and Veronica's. Oh no, wait, no, Betty. No wait, who's Archie's girlfriend? Veronica. Yes. One of them's dad's like wrapped up in the mafia, and he's like this big like he's trying to take over Riverdale. And the insider. That's Veronica, the dark haired one. Yes, Veronica. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Betty's the blondie one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Halloween. No, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I know what I'm looking for. Sorry, the heretics. I said it. Was that on the first of November? No, no. I'd like to double check. That's it. Was released on the first of November, but I'd like to have. To be fair, there. Are Don't many... question me. <laughs> there are multiple release dates. It is also listed as being down out since 18th of September. Uh. Available on demand from November 6th and on DVD from January 5th. All from our homeboys at Encore Entertainment because they do... Oh, cinema release. They do top... Not work, yes, the limited cinema release, yeah. which I, I not everybody, because yeah. a lot of the people in our uh, chat feed there don't know if you notice, aren't in America. <laughs> so getting to that limited cinema release, pretty difficult. Fair enough. <laughs> worth the trip, though. <laughs> Bit pricey for a movie, but worth the trip. America's great fun. Contrary, well, you, we don't know because the first movie made it look like we shit. <laughs> it's a certain place, they'll hate you. <laughs> they hate you. Uh, have you guys seen The Cured, an Irish zombie flick? I've heard of it, I haven't watched it. I have not. I think I've seen it. Have I. You? Mike, you get that ready and we'll watch it later. Um, it's another version of. Oh, what the fuck is the name of that story? I don't know. Is it an old Irish story? No, it's not an old Irish story. Okay. I read it years ago as part of the zombie anthology. Basically, the notion is that zombieism is a disease that can be somewhat cured, but even people that are cured have remission. That was that was the name of the, the story. Okay. It's a uh, first person. This guy wakes up, and the very first thing he hears is what he thinks is his alarm. It's not his, lar his alarm. It's his actual heart monitor because his heart has stopped, and he has a limited amount of time before he goes full zombie. So he's trying to get into a hospital before this happens because whenever there's a remission, it is legal to kill full, zomb full zombie remission people. Oh, holy moly. So it's actually a really good story. Like, yeah. he's trying to not scare the crap out of people and runs into, you know, like, vigilantes who are going around shooting zombies because they're allowed to, despite the fact that these people could be cured and put back to normal. Undead have rights, too. Kind of. But, um, yeah, no, really good story. But I've seen a couple of, I've seen a couple of films that... For me, were variations on that, that idea, and the cure seems to be one of them. Right. Okay. That seems cool. So, mm. all right. I'd say that's what's pretty much done. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. Uh, make sure to go over to American Horrors later on, where you're going to see myself and my other friend, who looks like a sock. What? Uh, where we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're, oh no! Actually, sorry. I tell you, there's not an episode. We got a little short film for you. Uh. Do that. I'm pretty sure I have the last short film here. We'll play this and then we'll uh, finish up the show on that. Just so if you're going to American Horrors, you're up to date on what's going on.
by the Giz. <laughs> Johnny's fucked up, dude. This is really fucked up, man. I know, I know, I know. Thanks for being here, man. It means so much to me. Whoa, hey! Dude! I'm a hologram? You can't fucking hug me, man! Fucking himbo! Yeah, I got that now! Thanks! Ah! Ah, shit, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that himbo crack. I'm just feeling the pressure, you know. Network's doing great. You now we're losing gears. It fucking sucks. Ah! Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks, dude. It's appreciated. Where's his family? I'm, I, I want to pay my respects. So, so where are they at? Uh, Giz is family. Giz is family are at the end of the coffin. Trust me, you'll know them when you see them. Whoa! Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, sure. Good advice, buddy. As always, uh, thank you so much. I believe you're correct, and I will pay my respects after. Yep, that's, uh, yep, that's probably good. A good idea just to be back in the house. Dearly beloved, we have gathered here today on the moment of the death of our dear bald friend, the Giz from the Gold Cast. Giz, you are a man among men. You were taken from this world far too soon, my friend. Dear Giz, why was it you, my friend? Why were you taken so soon by little bald funny friend? Why couldn't it have been Johnny? He's right! He should have been me! He should have been me! Part of the Goyle cast! The sex appeal! The himbo! Why was it Johnny first? Okay, the himbo likes a little bit. Why is... Over the top, isn't it? You should no. be here, my friend. We should be making a eulogy to Johnny. That worthless, worthless himbo! Why? Why was it Johnny first? Yeah, I don't know fucking long hair useless hippie over here. I do not look like a goddamn fucking hippie, thank you very fucking much. I'm wearing black. What do we do now? I don't know why I have to keep explaining this to people. Fuck's sake, one of them is as bad as the other. I was a Charlie first. Yeah, we get it, dude. You could move it along now. What to do? Ha! Ha! No! No! What? What do we do now? Without our little ball friend? Why? Why not Johnny first? Why not Johnny first? Why not Johnny? <laughs> Hi there, folks. Just figured I might as well interrupt this useless pile of crap to remind you to stay tuned and tune in to American Horrors this Sunday, half eight CST ish. Well, we're going to be talking about Pet Cemetery because all sorts of interesting things happen in that film that somewhat relate to this morbid piece of crap that's going on here. <laughs> fuck you, stop get up. No get respect away from me, you fuck ah, you fuck. Ah, let's deal with this. Ah, fuck, it's time to do this, I guess. Fitting into my warrior co host. I don't know about you, but I could use a drink. So we won't be streaming Pet Cemetery, or, or not streaming, reviewing Pet Cemetery tonight, but there will be the third part of that fucking movie. 
on the usual time and the usual bat channel, which is American Horrors on, and is 8.30 p.m. CST, for anyone who didn't know, over in American Horrors, where you get to see the third part of Urge to Purge, which is Purge City. Okay. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Right. Anyway, uh, next week we might cover Sabrina. I haven't fully... Ah. Next week I might cover Sabrina. I haven't fully decided what the... Uh, the story is there yet, but uh, from me, Johnny Deadly, and from Giz, Gorecast Go out. Out, 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 out.